morning, we have one of the blooms of our native land. She is a foundation, a pillar of this community, and she will bring her message of love and inspiration this morning. Friends, please help me bring um, to the podium Minister Reverend Anne Shan. Thank you, Sandy, for that warm welcome. And let me add my own words of welcome. Welcome to those joining us from the World Wide Web, and very specially this morning, our face-to-face -face members who always are with us. This is indeed a day to celebrate, a day of thanksgiving, Emancipation Day 182 years ago. This declaration was read. Freedom Paper, August morning, 1838, by the Queen, a proclamation. Whereas an act has been passed by the legislator of this or island of Jamaica for terminating the present system of apprenticeship on the first day of August next, and thereby granting the blessing and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all classes of its inhabitants and whereas it is incumbent on all the inhabitants of this or island to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor. We do therefore by and with the advice of our privy council of this said island direct and appoint that, all, that Wednesday, the said first day of August next, be observed in all churches and chapels as a day of general thanksgiving. To mighty God, for these his mercies and of humble intercession for the continued blessing and protection on this most important occasion. And we do hereby call upon persons of all classes within this or said island to observe this said day of August next with the same reverence and respect which is observed and due to the Sabbath. Witness His Excellency Sir Lionel Smith and a slew of night commanders and the rest of it. The same reverence and respect which is observed due to the Sabbath. Friends, we have come a long way. Yes, as Sandra said, one, two, three. The factory, as BBC calls us, <laughs> is still very much alive. And we have the potential to produce athletes of distinction. Thanks, Aileen. I can't do what you do, but I can cheer you. And all those that have that potential within. Yes, friends, the period of apprenticeship was terminated for all slaves and they became free. The blessing and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all. It was incumbent on all inhabitants of this island to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor. In the document, the declaration was made that the said first day August next be observed in all churches and chapels as a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for these his mercies and of his humble inter of, and of humble intercession for his continued blessing and protection on this most important occasion. And we do hereby call upon all persons of all classes within our said island to observe this said day of August next, with the same reverence and respect which is observed and due to the Sabbath. Points of significance from the proclamation. Blessings and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all. Inhabitants to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor. And a day deemed for general thanksgiving to be observed. My thoughts this morning are on the theme, spiritual freedom. 
and its inherent response that flows into our daily living. Spiritual freedom. Yes, we thank our colonial masters for their awakening to the realization that freedom is a blessing and privilege from the divine that encompasses all of creation. Divine favor, another term for grace, is due to all and everyone. We are grateful for this truth and that, has, that it has indeed found a way in the consciousness of our colonial masters and thereby allowing this proclamation from as far back as 1838. But this truth must emerge because it is the birthright of every living soul. So I do agree with the proclamation that this day should be given the respect and reverence as the usual Sabbath, a day of thanksgiving for the realization of our freedom. Jack Holland in his book, Your Freedom P to Be, stated, and I quote, we are spiritual beings first, last, and always. And our freedom rests not in external manifestations, but in an inner awareness of what we are and of what we are a part of." End of quote. So on this Emancipation Day, we give thanks that our freedom does not lie or rest in external manifestations or proclamations, but in that inner awareness of what we are and what we are a part of. From that understanding, we can choose where we place our faith and attention. And on this day, as we celebrate freedom, it must manifest in the collective consciousness of all. So freedom exists everywhere on this sacred planet. But what of our belief systems? Do they announce that we are free? Do we practice limitless living in our thinking and actions? Does the external manifestations give rise to our freedom to express ourselves? Friends, the outer cannot determine the truth of our freedom. Holland goes on to say, and I quote, we are unique expressions of the omnipresence and our attention must be on this truth. Truth is to be found in what eternally is, and that is God. Our Judeo-Christian Bible in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 to 18 reminds us, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, end of quote. The presence of God is within each individual and therefore liberty is present. Inherently, we are created in the image and likeness of freedom, liberty. As we continue to behold that promise in our hearts, in our conscious awareness, that glory of God within continues to transform us into that which we were created to be, free spiritual beings. That perennial urge to express without limitation is so much a part of each one and every one of us. Howard Thurman, the American poet and co-pastor of the American nation's first interracial congregation stated, and I quote, the discovery made by the slave that finds its expression in song, a complete and final refusal to be stopped. The spirit broods over all the stubborn and recalcitrant aspects of experience until they begin slowly but inevitably to take the shape of one's deep desiring. There is a bottomless resourcefulness in man that ultimately enables him to transform the spear of frustration in a shaft of light, 
end of quote. The spear of frustration in a shaft of light. We all have come to understand bondage, and it is not the truth about us. There is that which is in us that will overcome the stubborn vicissitudes of life, this bottomless resourcefulness that allows us to transform the spears of frustration in our lives into shafts of light that lifts us out of any and every untenable situation or event. Dr. Holmes has a statement that correlates that idea that no matter what the circumstances are, the intrinsic and fundamental truth is we were created out of freedom. Even sometimes when that idea seems alien to our belief system at some time or the other, we were created free. He states, in principle and in potential, we are immersed in good, for we are in the mind of God. But we have freedom or volition to create in our own experience out of the possibilities of life which we have been endowed, the prerogative of heaven or hell. So we need to shake ourselves loose from the tyranny of fear superstition, isolation, and emotional traditions, end of quote. So whatever reasons we use to remain in bondage, we have the choice to create our own heaven and hell until we have gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then the time is ripe for the shift to express that which is our true natural reality. For the past four weeks in the class Mental Equivalence, we have been discussing and dissecting the significance of that phrase. The class relies on the information gained from the book, The Mental Equivalent by Emmett Fox. He states in the book, and I quote, there is a mental equivalent of every object or occurrence on the physical plane. Everything that you see or feel on the material plane whether it is your body, your home, your business, or your city, is but the concrete expression of a mental equivalent that you hold, end of quote. Everything we see on the physical, there is a matching mental pattern of thought that corresponds to it. So, we do have the pattern of pattern of spiritual freedom ingrained in us, whether or not we are consciously aware of it, and it will not be suppressed. At some stage of our growth and unfoldment, an avenue will be created to allow the flow of that which is perfect and complete within us to be expressed. I summarize a story, a case study, given by Dr. Ernest Holmes in his book, Help for Today. In his own words, I quote, a noted surgeon's wife phoned me and said, I have gone as far as I can. I am ready to get a divorce. I am convinced that to live with someone who is causing not only myself but the children to be nervous and ill is wrong. We had quite a battle this morning and I told my husband, if he did not see you at once, and straighten himself out, I am going to sue for divorce, end of quote. The reason for this, she told Dr. Holmes, was that his ver every word was filled with criticism, condemnation, and sarcasm. Even the children feared him. He had driven away all of her friends with his rudeness, and she doubted her love for him. The husband, the doctor, called Dr. Holmes. His opening statement was, as I am a doctor of medicine, I am sure you know that I understand the situation at home perfectly. My wife is very neurotic. She thinks I'm cruel and deliberately causing her to suffer, which is of course not true. However, this morning she said she would divorce me at once if I didn't talk to you about myself. This is unnecessary. I would appreciate it if you would call her and tell her we have talked. 
And in your opinion, she's exaggerating the whole problem. I feel you should tell her that she is the one that needs help in the court. Dr. Holmes disagreed, of course, and asked that he stop by his office. The doctor went to see Dr. Holmes. The summary of that visit was that the doctor felt his wife was wrong in her accusations. Her trouble is imaginary. She, he was always under constant pressure and therefore required peace and quiet at home. His response to the situation at his office, he noted that his wife did not understand that his employees were only interested in big money and short hours. In other words, the good doctor did not feel he was at fault in any way. His wife liked to complain. Mm. The doctor had a mental equivalent that he was not at fault. And the accusations were baseless. Anyway, Dr. Holmes, very wise man, gave him homework. He requested that the doctor buy a package of dried beans and take it to the office. He should explain to his staff that he had reports that his words were unkind, his manner negative and displeasing. And for the next few days, he wanted to experiment to prove that these accusations were false. Therefore, he would ask them that every time they heard him say something unkind or sarcastic, call it to his attention and place a dried bean in a bowl on his desk. The good doctor felt that the experiment was ridiculous preposterous and childish. Dr. Holmes responded that perhaps the experiment would prove him right. And what he has been saying about himself was true. If that was so, then he, Dr. Holmes, would gladly phone his wife. The doctor left the office <laughs> and with the promise that he would report his findings in two days. But by that very afternoon at about four o'clock, the doctor called Dr. Holmes, and he said, and I quote, my bean pot is running over. <laughs> he was laughing as he said, I can't even open my mouth without having a bean in the pot. <laughs> then he became serious. And he said, thank you for teaching me a great lesson. I was sincere when I told you that my words were always kind and tolerant. I thought they were until this afternoon. But the beans speak for themselves. I can promise you my words and attitude will now be different. Incidentally, will you call my wife again and tell her to have bean pots ready for the family? Wow. We are going to have some fun tonight. End of quote. What have we understood from that case study? He was sincere in his belief that he was wrong. But he was wrong, sorry. He was also very open. And once he realized the error thinking, he made the shift. A mental equivalent of his true self. His spiritual freedom would not be denied. And he was able to come to a true understanding of self. What about us? Why not for the next rest of the week, every time, something positive, a blessing, a compliment, something good is spoken. Place a pea in a bowl on your table and then observe. So your homework this week is every time you say something good, something pleasing, something that is a blessing, Drop a dried bean or pea, whatever you have at home or marbles, drop it in a bowl on your table. And then at the end of the week, you can make your assessment. Dr. Holmes at the end of the case study stated, and I quote, yes, all of us can experience greater good in our lives if we will examine and understand our every thought, word, and action, end of quote. So friends, if something is not in alignment with the truth of our being, look at what is showing up. Observe it. And then laugh if it is, if it is well, not in a little dissonance. I suggest we laugh and joyfully take the steps to change the mental equivalent to that 
which is the true demonstration of a conscious spiritual being expressing from a position of love. Even if someone comes in our presence and there is dissonance, move towards the position of wholeness and let that idea of spiritual freedom, which is already embodied within us, find the right and appropriate way to express for us or on another, in another point of expression or whatever needs to be dissolved will be dissolved in case of fear or doubt or whatever need to emerge will emerge. Sometimes it's just a blessing and a benediction that we need to give to someone who has come into our presence. It is indeed God meeting God. And only spirit's highest idea for the good of all concerned would manifest. Dr. Holmes noted that Jesus knew all of us are divine creations and that each one of us is capable of becoming attuned to a divine power and wisdom that can meet every need. So friends, let us do the work and remember that we are always immersed from that standpoint of spiritual freedom, the freedom to change whatever does not agree with who we are. How do we do that? Our first linchpin is that of affirmative prayer. This spiritual practice assists us in the area of focus on truth, affirming our oneness with the divine mind and realizing our good by planting ideas and thoughts that can only contribute to the ways and means to reveal our desired good with ease. Our good already exists in the field of divine possibilities. Our prayer must firstly recognize the presence of God, the all good, and we unify ourselves with that presence because we are created in the image and likeness of that which is freely expressing through us. From this spiritual position of truth, we accept, affirm, and realize with thanksgiving the good in our experience, releasing it to the law of our being for complete demonstration. We always realize that good and more good is always ours to experience. We accept this privilege, this freedom to demonstrate with reverence and respect. Another linchpin is the practice of med meditation. Listen to Reverend Sony on Tuesday for an understanding of this very important practice. This practice, along with learning to sit in silence, prepares and keeps our mind fertile, fertile to facilitate effortless demonstrations. Dr. Holmes was very adamant about this. He said, why do we not find emancipation? because we do not take the time to be still and know that I am God and there's none else. We should recognize no other power, believe in no other, consequently see and think of no other power. We should know there is no possibility of any other power existing except that of absolute good, end of quote. When we continue to impress that seed idea in our conscious awareness, there's only good to express in our life and affairs. Day by day, we live in this transcendent attitude. We think, talk, and act always from the possibility of complete expansion. And only good and greater good can indeed unfold in our lives effortlessly. Can we say this together? After one, two, three. Life is good. Good and more good is mine today. Life is good. Good and more good is mine today. The third linchpin is the practice of mindfulness. I hope we all listen to Dr. Merritt Jones on Lifetime on Thursday evening. What is mindfulness? Being in the moment always staying present to our feelings, our thoughts, words, and actions. And that must keep us vigilant, friends, able to maintain our new mental stance. Our conversations will now reflect our highest good. We are able to intuitively to correct any dissonance that may pop up and have fun while growing in divine favor. Ever grateful for our blessings and privileges 
to immerse ourselves in our spiritual freedom. So, my summary for today is we are spiritual beings living and experiencing freedom at all times. We have the power to correct and restore our lives to that which we were created to enjoy, an abundant life of good and more good. Thirdly, the use of affirmative prayer, meditation, silence, mindfulness to assist us in maintaining the mental equivalent of our highest good, spiritual freedom. My challenge to all of us this day of emancipation, in words we have all heard from, or if you have read A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, you know these. And I quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Happy Emancipation Day.